Hi children, how are you all? You are fine. Hope you all are fine and fat. Okay, let's begin a subject SS and chapter religious developments. You know, in a medieval period, you know, in medieval period in India, we can see that various that religious developments spread. In all over the India, many religious leaders were there. That all leaders they appeal and carry messages of that different bhakti movements. So first of all, we'll study about the bhakti movement. So bhakti, the word bhakti means that devotion to the God. Prayer to the God. In simple way, we can see that devotion to the God. The seeds of this idea have existed in Vedic period. From Vedic period, the seed of that bhakti it emerged, and the main root of this bhakti movement was Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita. We can see many professions are given about Lord Krishna, and there are even humblest that talks, slogs, and in the devotion of Lord Krishna is given in our Gita. So bhakti was a sort of that personal relationship. We can see that between a deity and the God. It is a way. That we can pray to the God, and we will be free from our that life is free from our that life that all that desires. There was requirement for complex and rituals. There was no requirement for the complex and expensive rituals. So the leaders of this movement. Came from all the classes and castes. The leaders of bhakti movement they come from all classes and all the different castes. The bhakti bhakti movement it started in the Tamil that results around the sixth century. It started in Tamil around the sixth century. Then you know in Karnataka, then in Maharashtra it. Reach. It reached in North India and then Bengal around the 15th century. With the fall of that Mughal kingdom, it spread in all over the India. In North India, in North India, the upcoming that rulers like Rajput rulers and needed to receive the official that status from Brahmins by some religious rituals. The Brahmins used their growing authority. The Brahmins used their growing authority to make sure that they remain the superior by enforcing the caste system. There was a caste system, warrior system in the earlier time, in the earlier medieval period. Bhakti that gained in the north. With the coming of Islam, the Turks brought the Turk brought Islam, and there might have been instances of forces and convictions. But the biggest biggest fear was that the people might have wanted to cover a large scale because that. There was no hereditary in the caste system in Islam. In Islam, there was no hereditary class system. You know that different that bhakti saints they spread in different parts of India and spread their bhakti movement. They were using the language of common people. Wherever they will go, they will spread the messages of bhakti. Among the people.
people they were using the local language of a particular place or region you know vishnu shiva and durga became the main deity of during that period and the numerous gods various gods and goddesses worshiped during the medieval period you know that vishnu shiva durga they are the main that ladies and they were worshiped by majority people now we'll see that bhakti movement in south india so during the period between that 7th century to 9th century the bhakti movement spread in that south india it was popularized by the valvars and who were the followers of vishnu so the alvars were the followers of god vishnu and the nyayanas who were the followers of shiva alvars were the followers of vishnu god and nyayanas were the followers of that shiv god they went from place to place spreading their messages devotion to god and they spread their bhakti among the different villages and among the different people you know that they belong to the different caste and including that untouchability they portrayed a complete selfless that devotion to shiva and that vishnu there were 63 nayanas and 12 alvars 63 nayanas and 12 alvars were there who came from uh, diverse and backgrounds and different backgrounds they all came from different castes and from different backgrounds so you know the best among them that nayana saint was that sabandar then you know sundarar then manikasavasar manikavasagar then tevaram that all were the different that saints between uh, you know 10th century to 12th century that the cholas and the pandyas king were there they built many temples in the devotion of god and many trains visited by that saints and poets so that sankara chari was there sankara chari sankara chari was born in a village called that kalandi in kerala the saint sankara chari was born in a kalandi village in the kerala and in the 8th century he was an advocate and advita of vedanta he was a great saint and he was believing in oneness of god then he believed that god and his created the beings are one there is one god in the world he is created and the things are one in the world he set up for that mods mantras and for the centers of learning then we know about that ramanuja ramanuja saint ramanuja he was born in tamil and nadu in the 11th century he was born in tamil nadu in the 11th century he argued that the grace of god and more important than the knowledge of him devotion of god is more important about the knowledge of that god he also tried to link the bhakti with the vedas he tried to link that bhakti with vedas then you know that the bhakti movement spread in north india also so in the 13th century onwards the bhakti movement spread in the north india the coming of islam and 
Sufism set in India and led to a mingling of different states. Both Bhakti and Sufi saints drew that inspiration from Hinduism and Islam. Both saints were spreading their messages among the people. They had followers from that both faiths and the Bhakti movement in North India spread roughly that Ramananda who was a direct disciple of that Ramananda. From Rama, Ramananda's teachings that emerged the Nirguna school, Ramananda's teaching was there in the Nirguna school and the Saguna school. Many saints came from different that caste and from different backgrounds. For example, Kabir was there, a weaver, while the Ravidas was a cobbler. These saints preached they have different qualities and they spread the bhakti messages to the common people of India. And you know, some of the saints like Kabir and Nanak rejected the orthodox and the complex rituals, religious rituals and they prevent all people from this. Tulsidas, he wrote about that Ram Charit Manas and which described the story of Lord Ram. It is an expression of devotion to the Lord Ram. Nirguna Bhakti Saint was there, they popular in Hindi speaking and regional that Punjab and Rajasthan from the 15th century onwards. The Bhakti Saint, they use the language of the common people and the area, they give the message in the form of the poetry that you know by the lessons and language songs they give that religious message to the people. We know more about these things by orally and by traditions in the form of songs and poems. So the Bhakti movement spread in the West India between 13th century between 13th century to 17th century Bhakti movement spread in the West India and the movement became popular in the West India. The Vaishnava saints that Rev and Maharashtra reasons they spread this movement in that West India. The Vithala, Vithoba which is the form of that Vishnu God and they spread in West that India. The saints in Maharashtra wrote inspiring songs and in simple Marathi that language, then Namadeva, then you know Ekna, Tukarna, these all were the famous that saints in West India. The Bhakti saints reject all that ceremonies which were very complex and expensive and for them true bhakti lay in the simplicity and kindness for the others and to help others there is only the true bhakti. Bhakti in East India. Sankradeva that was a famous bhakti saint and he spread that bhakti in East India. He said in Assam he was a devotee of Vishnu and wrote poems and plays that assembles. His teachings were based upon the Bhagavad Gita. Spread many messages in the East India. His most teachings were about that Bhagavad Gita and he gave that devotional and bhakti messages to the people of that East India. Then the Chaitanya was a famous saint of that Bengal 
who was a devotee of Lord Krishna. So these were the bhakti saints. Among them, some women bhakti saints also were there. They also spread their messages. There were many female that bhakti saints and also expressed their devotion to the God. Two of the bhajans and you know that devotional songs. Janabai belonged to the poor caste Sutra family. He expressed the devotion to the Lord Vithoba and by the bhajans. Ganga Sati was a Gujarati that son composed some bhajans inspiring the peoples. Ratan Bhai, another Gujarati saint, she also expressed that songs and bhajans devotion to the Lord. Meera Bhai was a Rajput princess who married to the royal family of Meva and became a disciple of Ravidas and she expressed her love towards the Lord Krishna and her devotion in his songs and bhajans. So some that women bhakti saints were also there during the medieval period. So in Ramkaratan Bhai was Gujarat saint who was sent to have work on spinning. He was spinning a wheel and composed a bhakti poems. So these were the women bhakti that saints. So these all were women bhakti saints. Okay. I hope you understand this month's lecture. Okay. Thank you children. Bye.